Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 10th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk a bit about a severe drought situation that is impacting farmers in southeastern Australia. But before I do, I want to talk about Australia's climate trends related to human-caused climate change and fossil fuel burning and how that is helping to increase potentials for droughts in southern sections of Australia. So the first trend is that Australia has been heating up since the early 1900s. And these increases in temperatures for Australia are consistent with also a warming of the surrounding oceans. These increased temperatures are shifting the dynamic temperature pattern for Australia in which more extreme heating events are more likely. And we've seen the frequency of extreme heat events ramp up considerably over recent years. In addition, we're seeing an increase in, in the number of days above 35 degrees Celsius across parts of Australia. And this increase in temperature is increasing the intensity of heat waves, as well as the potential intensity of droughts when they do occur which is also lending an increase in fire danger across Australia. All this information provided by Australia's Bureau of Meteorology. But in particular, I'd like to call your attention to rainfall trends across Australia. As Australia has warmed and as the global climate has warmed due to human-caused climate change, Precipitation bans and weather systems delivering rainfall to southern sections of Australia have tended to shift south, which has resulted in increasing rainfall deficits for southern and eastern sections of Australia. Looking at the most recent six month time period, we see that large sections of Australia, particularly southern and eastern Australia, have seen major moisture deficits. Unfortunately, according to Australia's weather forecast, the expectation is that dry conditions for southern and eastern Australia are expected to continue for at least the next three months. Now, pulling out, I just like to say that increased temperatures, increased heat waves, and for, for certain regions, increased drought is a signal of human-caused climate change. And presently, Australia's farmers are getting hit very hard. In particular, livestock stock farmers are unable to afford feeding their livestock and so are being forced to slaughter animals en masse, which is dumping a large volume of meat onto the global market. Now, these losses for farm farmers are ranging in the hundreds of thousands. As of last month, Australian farmers, according to this report, in Reuters slaughtered 659,000 head of cattle in June, which is the high, highest monthly figure in three years. And as a result, farmers are, are hard hit and it is unlikely that farmers will be able to recover in, in, a, in a short period. And if drought conditions continue, and presently 99% of New South Wales which generates one quarter of Australia's agricult agricultural production is presently under, dr under drought conditions, with forecasts indicating that drought is likely to continue. So a very hard hit for Australia's 
farmers that is related to human-caused climate change. Now, unfortunately, we're starting to see these events increase as, as temperatures exceed the one degree Celsius range above 19th century averages. And in many cases, these increased temperatures, increased risks of fires, increased risks of drought, increased heat waves, increased extreme weather events along a number of spectrums, increasing sea level rise, and other impacts related to human-caused climate change are starting to become very costly. And as we can see from this climate signals post, the, the impact of, of wildfires for California is becoming very costly. This is just one example, a, a dot in a map of increasing costs due to human-caused climate change. Human-caused climate change is, is basically the equivalent of, of, of weaponizing weather against human civilization. And, and what it has been found is that if nations do not adhere to the Paris Climate Treaty, the global cost is at least 23 billion, I'm sorry, 23 trillion dollars. That, that's a massive cost for, for not adhering to pledges to cut greenhouse gas e emissions and to cut fossil fuel burning. Now the cost to Australia, according to recent reports, for failing to reduce emissions is 126 billion per year. What this means is that droughts like we are now seeing in Southeast Australia, which are hitting the farmers so badly, tend to ramp up impacts to valuable systems in Australia, such as the Great Barrier Reef and, and, and other impacts to the natural environment from instances related to human-caused climate change, such as wildfires, ramp up considerably, considerably, even as coastal cities come under threat from sea level rise. Now that's a, that's a pretty severe set of impacts to be looking at for, for failing to respond to human-caused climate change by, by encouraging renewable energy adoption and decoupling from harmful energy production such as coal. So a general overview of the situation for Australia at present, extreme drought is hitting farmers very hard. But in the future, the situation will worsen considerably if Australia and other nations around the world do not adhere to climate commitments and work as hard as they can to move away from fossil fuel burning and toward clean energy systems as a response. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.